Hey guys, it's Agustin Delmar again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so by just clicking the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm really excited because I'm basically going to walk you through an example that I created in Unity with Oculus Quest. So this example is basically going to show you an experience that I've been prototyping for drawing in VR. We're going to be basically drawing around the area that we're on we're going to be moving the controllers to draw. We also have an overlay on the controller that is going to allow us to change the thickness of the line and also the color of the line. So I want to show you some of the components that I have set up in Unity and some of the beginnings of the prototype so that you know what it takes to actually create something like this. So let's jump into Unity and I start looking at it. All right, guys. So let me show you what I have going on in this project. So. Just for your information, this project is going to be something that I want to release someday in the Oculus Quest platform. Right now it's been more of a prototype and I've been working on it for a few days and I am pretty excited about the progress that I have so far. So what I want to show you is how it runs and the changes that you see now, this is after two days of work. And the ones that I'm going to show you how it runs is in Twitter, I actually posted the video of some of the experiences and some of the things that I did by running this on the device. So here's one experience that I can show you. Let me just go ahead and know, uh, because I know that the volume is pretty high. So I'm just going to repeat it. So in this one, I'm basically just drawing the word, you know, hola and, and making sure that I have enough precision on the line that I can do that. And there's a lot of things going on in here because if I go back to this frame, you, as you can see, it's not a continuous line. So that's one thing that I had, I was struggling with when I started implementing this, because you might think that you can just use a line render and that's it. But you need to make sure if you're gonna implement something like this, you, know, you need to make sure that you know when the user is letting go of the button in order for you to know when to start drawing a new line. So you need to try a couple of things. You need to try when they're letting go of, a, of an action and now so when they're starting a new action so that's when you see a line here and then i'm basically letting go of the trigger button starting another line letting go and then starting another line and in some cases i just want something continuous and that's what i'm going to show you below so here i just finish we can finish watching the video so that you can see how how this works so basically you know moving around the the way that i move around is i'm using a, a character controller and this is the OVR character control that I showed you before in the previous video. So that's how I can move around. A lot of people were asking me, Dilmer, so you have a big house because that's a basically a big area. And it's not that I have a big house. I actually are, I'm idle, I'm sitting down and I'm moving with the character control. I'm also drawing. So I thought it was pretty cool use of using, you know, a character controller with also a line render. And that's why I'm really excited about this one. So if you notice on this one, I think I'm doing the same thing on this one. So let me go ahead and go down. So this one is pretty interesting because I'm using a character controller and I'm basically just, you know, moving around the scene and I'm holding the trigger button as I'm, you know, as I'm moving around. I'm also moving, you know, the location of my hands. I'm moving my hands around, as you can see here, and kind of keeping the same pattern of both hands. I'm also doing circles. And, and it was just really fun to, to do this, to be honest. I, I had tons of fun, but in this implementation here, this was prior to the new implementation that you see here. I didn't have things quite working, right? I was, I had continuous lines. Sometimes the lines didn't line up correctly. You can see right there that I had a bug because this line was, you know, it ended there and then all of a sudden it's continuous here. And, and it was because I, I was just, you know, learning and, and you guys know that I learn as I do things. So I just had an issue with that one. This one's also really cool because I'm basically just moving backwards and then, you know, moving my hands as I as I play the, the experience. So so this is all cool and all. And, and why am I doing this video? Well, the reason, because I, not only I'm excited about it, I'm really excited about it, but I want to show you some of the setup. I'm not going to show you the code just yet because I, I really want to release this to the public someday. So I will do another video where I keep it basic and I can show you how to implement something like this. But I want to show you how the project is set up in Unity and, and some of the upcoming features that I have. And in fact, you can probably see that I now have some GUI 
on this controller and also GUI on the left controller. So I also want to provide more options to somebody who is painting. So if you're painting, I want to be able to show you, you know, like if you're looking here, let me just go ahead and disable the gizmos. I want to show you and allow you to basically see more options. So if I wanted to change the line width, I could change the line width. And, and these two are independent. Like if I want to change the one on the right, I can change the one on the right. If I want to change the one on the left controller, I can change that. If I want to change the color on the right one, I can change that. And right now I just have pretty fine colors. The reason for that is because I don't really want to allow too many colors at the beginning. I just want to see how the experience is before I add a full color palette. So that's the reason behind the colors, just keeping it basic, MVP, make sure that I like what I'm building, and then I can expand it to, you know, maybe a full palette. So, so that's basically what I have going on. I'm gonna show you how you can run, how I can run this on the, on the editor. So just like in every other video that I make, I try to make it in a way that I can do as much as I can, I can test as much as I can in the editor without having to jump and, and deploy to a platform. And that's really important for me because if you don't do that, you're going to spend a lot of time building your game, pushing your game or your experience to the device, finding a bug and then going back and forth. And that to me, after, you know, like eight years of making games and making things, you want to make sure that you minimize that as much as you can and build tools around it to help you, you know, help you with that process. So that's what I'm doing here. So. I can do everything in the editor, and that's why I have the game here. You, you, I actually don't see much of the game. To be honest, I'm basically working in here. And then when I want to see the game running, I can, you know, I can actually run it on the device. So what I'm going to show you, let me go ahead and close out of the asset store since I'm not using that. So what I'm going to show you is how it works. So if I hit play, you're going to hear the music, of course. And let me go ahead and mute it. And so what I want to show you is how this works if I wanted to run it on the device, on the on the editor. So as you can see, I'm going to walk you through the structure. So this is basically based on the examples that I posted in GitHub under my Oculus Quest Essentials uh, GitHub repository. So you're more than welcome to download that. So what I have, I have a VR player controller, which is the same one that I posted in that repository. I have my forward direction, which is part of the Oculus Quest data integration. And then I have my OVR camera. So you guys know about that if you've seen my previous videos. And the other thing that I have in here that it's not part of the core component that Oculus provides you is some of the draw functionality that I have in this game. And, and some of the draw functionality is what you're gonna be seeing here. So every controller has what I call a VR draw. And this is a virtual reality draw component. And the responsibility of this component is to basically draw a line. So not all the time I'm gonna be drawing a line. I might be drawing a mesh. I might be drawing a line. And when I say a line, I'm talking about a line render component within Unity. So the other thing that I'm also doing, you can see that the, the first component is a VR draw left, by also, but I also have a VR draw right. So this one obviously is for the, for the left controller. This one is for the right controller. And the way that I know that is by determining, is by basically, this is an enum behind the scenes. So I tell the system, okay, what is this gonna be used for? So this is gonna be for the left hand. And the reason why I do that is because I need to be able to track what button they're pressing. And if you know, if you, if you have a look at the implementation of the OVR input, they have something called primary and also something called secondary. So primary buttons and primary prefixes are normally inputs that you want to capture for the left hand. And the secondary is going to be for the right hand. So that's the reason why I have this is because I need to know, okay, if I'm capturing, you know, if this is for the left hand, what kind of input I need to be capturing? And that's what I'm using to capture the input. The other piece that I have in here on the inspector is I have an option called use as spline. And you probably saw it or you probably haven't seen it, but I've been tweeting about a component that I downloaded from the asset store and it's actually completely free, it's open source and it's called Spline Mesh. So that's what I'm using on the game for the mesh type lines that I'm, that I'm rendering. You can see that I have that right here. And I can also show you that in Twitter. I just basically just retweeted that just to let people know that the asset it's available. And let me see if I can go in here to tweets. Oh, and I'm not logging, so that's why this is complaining about it. Let me see if I can find it 
in here. If no, you can basically just find it from the asset store. So we can just say Unity 3D Asset Store. And we can just go to that. And then if you search for Spline Mesh, and I'm really not trying to sell you anything because this asset is completely free. So I just want you to know that, that this is completely free. And, and I really been working with the author on this asset. I really enjoy it. So he has a paid version, but you know, the one that I'm using is the free version. But if you feel like, you know, it's giving you a lot of value, go ahead and check it out because I think this free version has a lot of functionality that it's completely free. And, and that's some of the functionality that, that I'm also using in the game in the experience. I keep saying game, but it's actually an experience. So, so that's why I'm using these, these bold values. So whenever it's set to true, I'm using a spline. Whenever it's set to false, I'm basically using the line render. And, and to be honest, so far, I'm, I think I'm going to be using the line render. The reason for that is because for what I need to be able to do a mesh of the size of a room, it's going to take a lot of resources and I'm not seeing the performance that I need in order for me to use a spline. I'm not saying that it, it performs badly. I'm just saying that for this experience, it's not the best use scenario. But for other cases where you need to, you know, create a spline for something that is pretty fine, then in those cases it's okay because the mesh is gonna be created right before you actually, it's not a real time, it's more of, you know, something that it's already being created, the mesh is already being created at the time that you are creating the spline. So versus me creating a spline as I'm running the game, it's more it's more intensive on, perf on performance. So that's what this is. That was a long explanation, but I think I needed to give you some background. And then, you know, whenever I'm using a spline, I have this left spline component. Obviously it's gonna be for the left hand and also the right hand spline component. And in this one, I have the spline mesh tiling and also a spline smoother, which I disabled because I was just testing a couple of things. But what this allows you to do, and I'll show you that in a second, it basically smooth the spline out so that it looks more realistic if you start creating multiple points. So I'll show you how this works in just a second. So, so that's what the spline component is. If it's set to true, I'm using a spline mesh implementation. If it's set to false, I'm basically using the line render implementation that comes with Unity. So the other thing that I needed to find out is not always I want to start creating a new point. So anytime I'm drawing, so for instance, if I'm drawing a point from right here to right here, if I'm drawing a point, I don't really, you know, in, in, if you're moving, I don't really want to create a new vertice, vertices. Every time I'm drawing, like, you know, if, if I'm too close to two, those two lines, I don't want to do that repeatedly because it's just not going to look good. So what I'm saying here is if I'm, if I have, a distance between the first vertex position, vector position, to the second vector position, if the difference between those two is 0 0.01, let me undo that, then I'm going to create a new, basically a, a new point in the line render. So the other thing that I wanted to do as well is, let me see if I, I don't remember if I'm actually using this variable to be honest, because now that I'm thinking about, I'm only using this one, but I don't think I'm using minimum drawing pressure. I don't remember using that, so it's more likely something that I had it and then never use it. The the other thing that I'm really using is that, that I'm using is the line default width, and that specify how thick the line is going to be. So whenever you're using the line render, and I can show you the line render right here, it basically allows you to set up a start width and an end width. And, and the, the way that they're implementing, this is Unity component, is you can basically go here and say, okay, I want to start at a large number and maybe, at a, and then end at a, at a smaller number. What that allows you to do is basically create a, a line that is gonna be, you know, thicker, and then it's gonna start going down with size when when it ends. So the way that I implemented, I didn't really need that, at least for now, for this version. And in fact, if we go back to, if we go back to Twitter, and I can show you that video one more time, let me go ahead and back to media. And I'll probably just go here. And we just scroll down until we can find. Okay, so this is some of the newer implementation. And so if you notice on this video, the, the line width is actually constant. And so you expect this line to be constant. And that's what I'm using on my implementation. I'm basically setting the star width to be a value. 
and that value is the value that you see right on that component. So if we go back to the VR draw left, the, the star value is going to be 0 0.01 and the M value it's going to be 0 0.01. So that's where you're going to see you know a constant thickness on each line that you're drawing. So but you can actually change that. If you wanted to implement something where you can set the star width and the end width, I could totally add that as well. I'm actually thinking about adding it now that I'm thinking about because I think it'll give you it'll give me more functionality and flexibility as I'm drawing. If I may want to tweak it a little bit, I could maybe at the beginning I start with a thinner line and then as I go through the drawing of the line, I can get much much of a bigger line. But but that's up, you know, I, I gotta test it and see if that's gonna work. The other thing that I needed to do is if you compare the left VR draw left and VR draw right, obviously I have the right control hand set up here and on this one I have the left and I also have the left spline and you can see that I have on the other one I have the right spline but I also have a material and I wanted each controller to have their own material and be independent because let's say that I wanted to change the color on this material and I was sharing that material with the other controller well if I do that the line is going to change on the left controller and also on the right controller so I think by keeping it this way, I'm going to be able to control them independently. And now thinking about it, I might need to create these materials at runtime because the user, let's say that you're drawing a line. And for instance, in this case, it's that I want to draw this line, right? And then, you know, I bring up a menu and I say, okay, I want to change this, this new line that I'm going to draw to, to be red. Well, if, if this is the right controller and I'm changing the material on the entire component, What's going to happen is both of them are going to change to red. So what I need to do is I need to change the, the the material creation, and I need to create it at runtime. As soon as I'm going to draw the new line, and I set those properly, I need to get a new material. So that's something that I need to do in maybe I'll do it tonight right after I'm done with this video. So that's what this is for. It's basically the material on the line. the The other things that I have here is the left key and the right key. So the way that this works is when you're drawing when you're actually running this on the device and you hold the trigger button and i'm basically rotating so you can see this button right here so if i'm holding that that's what i call that's basically an action but that's getting captured on the ovr input but if i'm running on the if i'm running on the editor i don't have that i don't have the capability right now to to basically send that input so instead of me trying to figure it out and connect my my device to Unity and do, you know, all those crazy things that I really don't have time to do, then instead of doing that, I just basically added a property and I call it right key and left key. And this could probably be called something like trigger key, mockup of trigger key, and then you can call it left or right. And then basically what this does is overrides that behavior. So if I'm in the editor and I check that, I'm basically triggering, I'm basically mocking the trigger button so that I can run that in the editor as soon as I uncheck it, it's like releasing that button in the editor. So that's what these two are. And then the other component that I have in, that I have in here that I started adding, and you don't see and you haven't seen in this mock-up, is a menu that I created. And you can probably see it on one of the previous tweets that I have. And I went through multiple iterations. In this iteration, I had, you know, I started, a, I started this yesterday morning, and I started just to come up with some ideas on what things I wanted to include. So in this version, I just was going to include the line width, and and it just doesn't, doesn't have much of you know UI design. Even in the, even the new one needs some more some more work. But right now, if I were to run this, and I can separate the let me go ahead and separate the controllers so they're not close to each other. So if I were to hold the actually press the A key, or on the on the editor and also the X key. Okay, so now I remember. So the A key is going to be for the right controller. The X key is going to be for the left controller. And the reason why I did those is because that, that's actually how it works on the when I run it on the device. So if I'm using the left controller in Magic in Magic Leap, I've been doing about I've been doing videos about Magic Leap. So if I'm doing that on the Oculus controller, then and I'm holding the X key, it's basically going to bring that menu. If I'm doing that on the right controller and I hit and I hit the A key, it's gonna bring. So I try to map those to the keyboard as close as I could. So this is basically the new, the new menu that I've been working on, and I show you that at the beginning of this video. But 
this is that change from you know going to this version to this new version and the other things that I did is I've been working on also making sure that I can test it in here so if I were to right now the, these are these two are not independent within the editor if I change the language on one it changes on the other one but if you run on the magic leaf in the magic leaf device on the oculus device it will work just fine and, and you can make fun of me for saying magic leap over and over it's just that i've been doing the last few video videos have been mainly about magic leap so that's why magic leap is in my head but but they're actually great so that's why i can i cannot focus on, on on oculus right now but anyway so that's that's what this is and then the other thing that i can do is if i press on the down arrow i can go and cycle through the colors so the way that I want it, I want this to work is if I'm using the thumb stick, which is actually the button that sits right here. And if I if I press it down, it's going to allow me to change to the menu that is on the bottom. So the way that it's gonna work is I'm gonna hit in a, I'm gonna basically move the thumb stick down to go to the colors, and then I'll be able to do the thumb stick to the right and then left and be able to cycle through the colors. And then if I want to go back to the line width. I'm gonna be able to just do the same thing that I just show you. Just go back and then basically it's going to allow me to change the line width as I, you know, as I as I toggle through those options. So that's the initial implementation. I, I have a lot of ideas on other things that I'm going to be having on this menu. Right now I want to so I basically have the demo that I just show you here where I'm drawing that I'm drawing lines. Let me go back to go back to that and yep this one right here where i'm drawing lines and i'm also doing this one this one right here and then this other one right here that feels like i'm i'm actually flying around but i haven't run it on the device with this new menu so i'm going to be doing that today so once i'm done with the explanation of the structure you're going to be able to see how this works on the at the end of this video all right so how do i test it and and what are some of the other components so i show you the VR draw left. I also show you the left spline. Also the the anchor. This is not different to what you saw before, but what I have. So this is part of the Oculus component, but inside I have the VR control options, and and I've been working a lot on this and learning a lot of this as I as I go. So this is basically a canvas that is set up with the world space, and I have a I have the center eye anchor selected. That's how Oculus has their UI set up, and that's I basically follow their structure in order for me to come up with this. And if I wanted to move, let's say that I wanted to move the left, you know, the left hand anchor, which is what's going to happen when you move the controller. You can see that the this canvas actually moves with the controller, and that's because it's inherently, you know, a child, a child of the left left hand anchor. So if I were to rotate this, everything works. If I were to do this, everything works. So, you know, this is what I'm basically gonna be running on the device. So I wanna make sure the rotation and all the things are working. I can, of course, show things and hide it. And you can see that it's fading out, fading in. I'm also using a UI component to do the fade out and fade in. So on the VR control options, I have the same setup for the left controller and also for the right hand anchor controller so if you notice i have the vr control options here and i also have the vr control options here so on this guy i basically have multiple components in there one is for the background and a lot of this is going to change i right now i just have placeholders but i'm going to be creating photoshop files to basically give this a little more depth right now like i said it's just prototyping and then of course i have you know a header label and another thing that I'm also using is I'm not using the default text that comes out of the box with Unity because it is really bad when you start sizing things, especially when you're dealing with, you know, VR or AR. So I really recommend that you use Text Mesh Pro that is now part of Unity. So you want to make sure that you use that because the, the text is really clean. Even when you're resizing things, you can see how crisp that is in comparison to using the font that comes out of Unity that is really, really bad. I'm not saying that it's bad in general. I'm just saying that for these use cases, it's just not what I recommend you to be using. So, and then I have basically a slider label, which I'm also using the Text Mesh Pro component. Also the slider, which is part of Unity. 
a color label, and then these are just basically all different colors. And I also have a component on, if you look at this slider, I have a component that is called VR controller option. And, and this is more of a, of a base class that I use for determining if an option is selected or not. And also it tells me what the controller type. Uh, the reason why, I'm, why I have that is because when, I'm, when I have something selected, I want to find out what type of component is selected. And then based on what is selected and based on what the value is changed, I'm basically calling an action and that action determines what it needs to do. Which in this case, if I'm changing the line width, it basically changes the value on the slider. If I'm selecting a color, it will change the color on the, not only on the slider in this case, but also on the line, on the line render. And also the color is going to be the color on the material that is assigned to the line render. Hopefully that's not that confusing, but there's just a lot of things going on in this simple implementation. And then for the colors, the way that I have this working, this is a VR draw color. This is a child object. So this is inheriting from the VR controller option. It's also an option, but it's not inherently, you know, using all of its functionality. All I'm using from the pairing is the is active. So that's why you see these as the same properties. Basically, this is a child class of the VR controller option. So as different implementation, because I have to, I have to do something different behind the scenes to be able to change the color. So you can see that I have what's called a unity action and that unity action takes in a color. So that's what I have this implementation showing, you know, what this is mapped to as far as the VR draw left component is, and then what action we're going to be calling whenever the color is changed. So whenever the color is changed, I'm going to call an, a method on the VR draw that is going to change the, line, the color of the line render. So that's what this is doing. And then for the fade in and fade out that I showed you before, that's basically, I'm using, if you notice here how things, not on that component, but on this component, you can see how the alpha it's getting. So I basically have a core routine right there that it's lowering the alpha value and then based on a time. So if the time is set to three seconds, it's basically gonna change the alpha value over those three seconds. So you can see how that it's working for fading and fade out. So that's what this is, the control option is. And then, so I have the same thing, the same thing set up for the right hand and the left hand. And, and of course I have a line render by default set up at the, at the pivot position and of the v of the left hand con left hand anchor and also one for the right hand anchor i think i'm losing my voice after talking for so long so hopefully this is all making sense and if no guys you know feel free to let me know in the comments so the next thing that i want to show you is okay dilmer now that you have all that set up i how do you see this working like right now so the way that i that i can test it and i i was telling you how much I, I work on making sure that this works on the editor. So right now I'm not drawing anything, right? So one of the things that I had it, and I show you that at the beginning of the video, is I want to make sure that I can mimic what the trigger button on the controller is gonna do. So this is what this is gonna do. So if I were to press the, if I were to check the right key, that's basically saying, okay, Unity, I'm going to simulate the trigger button on the Oculus controller just as long as I'm in the editor. If I'm not in the editor, I'm gonna I'm gonna basically ignore that property and use the real mapping on the controller. So now, now that we did that, I can actually just do this. I can move around and I can draw. And obviously it's not working. So let me see what I what I did wrong in here to make sure that everything. So let me go ahead and undo everything that I did just to make sure that, okay, so I got, okay, let me go ahead and hit play. And okay, I remember now. So the reason why it didn't work before is because that's another thing. Like if I have the menu open, I don't want to keep drawing. So that's one of the checks that I'm doing. And in fact, I can try, I can do it one more time so that you can see, I'm going to bring both menus and I'm going to try to move this anchor. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to move this to the side. I'm going to then go to the VR draw right. And I'm going to check the, I'm going to check the right key. And then I'm going to move it around. So that's not drawing. It's not drawing because this is actually open. So if I were to hit the A button to dismiss the menu and move the controller, you can see that now I'm drawing, I'm drawing a line. If I go forward, I'm drawing a line. If I go, you know, 
if I go in directions, if I go and move around, I'm drawing a line. So we can also, you know, I can also rotate the controller and draw a line. And so, so the whole thing is working. I can move this one independently. And then if I wanted to bring the menu in, I can see my menu. So this is gonna simulate what it will look like when I do the Oculus experience. And the cool thing about this though is now I can, so let me go ahead and, and dismiss the other one. And let's say that I wanted to change the thickness. So you can see that the thickness is getting changed. Obviously in this case, it's really hard to see, but I'm gonna dismiss that again. So I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna press the A key on my keyboard. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, you know, start drawing. You can see that the line is now huge. And I can do, I can do that. I can do that. But then you might ask Tilmer that the line is continuous and I wanna let go of that. So let me go ahead and go back and press the, le the letter A. And let's just change the change the thickness. I think that's just way too big. So in in this case, we have the trigger. We're basically mimicking the behavior of the trigger. So if I want to uncheck, if I uncheck that, that's, that's basically, you know, simulating that we're releasing that trigger. So in that case, what's going to happen is as soon as I start drawing, you're going to see a new line render getting draw. And in fact, it's not working because, and this is actually good because I have the menu open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go forward. And so you can see that the line that I drew in there, which I'm not an artist when it comes to doing that in the editor, but I'm going to dismiss that again. And now we're going to start drawing. So I can't really see it just yet, right? Because we still have these set to, to fall. So we release it. We need to bring it back on. And it looks like I still have an issue because this shouldn't be drawing a continuous line anymore since I since I, I release of the button. Let me see if I can, I can find out what it is. And I'll just let it go. And then we'll just move in here and select it again. And it looks like I do, I do have a bug still because what should have happened is there should have been a new line. Oh, okay, 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 I remember. I remember now. So this happened because it's 12.44 AM. <laughs> okay, so, so there's two things that, that right now are not working in the editor. So this is actually working. The reason why it's not working is because of limitations with the, the way that I implemented it. So, so as you can see, I can draw, right? And so if I want to start a new line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in here and release that. And I can now move the, I can now move this. And the, the reason, the way that I had it, that I have it working is if I press the right key on my keyboard, you can see that a new line got rendered, got created, but there's nothing rendered just yet. And now if I start the right key again and go to the anchor, you can see that that's now a new line. And that has its own properties. Looks like it's picking up the properties from the from what I had set up pre previously. It didn't read the new property. So this is a, actually a bug because it should have changed. And I think another thing that is gonna happen here, oh, it's actually independent, so this is great. So I think this part is working fine but it didn't read the last value that I set on this line render. So, but we know that we can now, I think, yeah, we know that we can now create multiple lines and those lines are independent. So I could do this one more time. We can go ahead and dismiss, let me go ahead and get closer. I can dismiss the menu by pressing the letter A on my keyboard. And then what I can do now is, let me make sure that this is unchecked. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all the way to the right. I'm gonna do this one more time. And I'm gonna hit the right key to create a new line render. And this is what's gonna happen on the device. I'm just mocking up what the behavior will be. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start drawing again. You can see that that's starting at that point because it created a new line. And then I can say, okay, I can now draw. I can say, you know, something like, like what you saw in the video. Obviously in here it's more, more difficult. That's supposed to be an H, but that gives you that gives you an idea of how this works. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what I have, you know, working on. And like I said, I have a lot of different things that I have that I have planned for this for this prototype. So the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to build this project to the device, and I want to show you how it looks on the device before we finish this video. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my build settings here and we're going to go and make sure and these are scenes that i deleted let me go ahead and get them deleted 
and then this is going to be the scene that I want to build and then make sure that I have my device connected which I don't believe I have the device connected but I will get it connected and then show you the results of running this on the device so thank you guys all right guys so I got this working and running on my device so I'm going to show you a video it's a really long video so I'm going to show you just pieces of it so as you can see I have the game starting let me just go ahead and lower the volume a little bit so you can hear me looking at the controllers looking at the menu making sure that I can change and I think I found I found a couple of bugs by running this because as I move the the trigger it shouldn't be changing the direction you know when the when the menu is open so that's one thing that I need to change so I'm just gonna fast forward it to areas where I want to show you so if I go right about here so I'm trying to kind of like create a kind of see I'll just play it for a little bit so you can see how it works so I'm just drawing different things, just experimenting in VR. It's actually the first time that I've done anything like this, not only coding-wise, but actually through an experience. So here I'm just creating, I'm trying to create a cube, <laughs> but I don't think that that worked really well. So here, here's like my second attempt for creating a cube, trying to make it and not uh, shake my hand, but it's still, it's not, it's not perfect. So there's some things that I want to do as far as like the experience and allow people to, you know, be able to create straight lines, be able to, you know, create lines that are free form, just like the ones that you're seeing. And then here I'm just basically drawing and filling in the cube. And then I want to show you, oh yeah, I'll show you some of the cylinders that basically the rings that I, that I started creating that I thought was pretty cool. And that attempt was not successful. This attempt was successful. I just am rotating and I change the thickness and you can see how I create a ring right there. Here's another ring trying to make it a little better. And I lift my hand just to see the... Because this is all experimentation. This is just trying to find out what looks cool, what doesn't look cool, what can I fix, what can I improve. And then, yeah, so you can see there that I created just multiple rings and they're crossing and let's see if I can show you so in some of these areas so there I'm kind of like creating a house and then here I'm trying to change the width so I changed the width to something you know very very small I think this one because I wanted to show you how I can change you know in this case I made it very very tiny on the line that I thought was pretty interesting and then there's another area in the beginning that I don't think I show you that actually look really really cool. Oh, okay, so I think it was it was about here. So this is an effect that I thought was pretty cool. I had a thin line and a and a thicker line, and then I'm I'm basically rotating around just to see what effect I create. So I mean I'm not I'm not an artist, but I'm that I could imagine that you know something like this could provide an artist with a lot of flexibility. And obviously I have some issues to fix on the lines because they're not, the math is just not right on the curves. But that's basically what I wanted to show you. I think this is a, a great start. I'll be doing more videos as I polish this and add new features and then basically share it with you guys. So I hope this was helpful, guys. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you, guys. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.